blamed me when you brought the fainting girl to me. You gave the old lady an excuse for taking up quarters in my house, and for the last two years, I've shunned her like a plague. Mama, damn it, she'd have married me. Good Lord, here she is again. I'll <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes, Sergeant Metal, don't go. With the... I have something <coughs> grave in court to say to thee. It's coming. Faith, <laughs> I think I'm not wanted here. Nay, Master Leonard, <laughs> I've naught to say to thy father that his son cannot hear. True, I'm one of the family. I have forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Tis about this Elsie Maynard. A pretty girl, Master Leonard. Aye, fair as a peach blossom. What then? She hath a liking for thee, if I mistake not. With all my heart, she's as dainty a maid as you'll find in a midsummer's day march. Then be warned in time, and give not thy heart to her. Oh, I know what it is to give my heart to one who will have none of it. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. She knows all about that. <laughs> and why should my boy take heed of her? She's a good girl, dear Carruthers. Oh, good enough for aught I know. <laughs> but she's no girl. She's a married woman. A married woman? Tush, old lady! She's promised to take quite the lieutenant's new jester. Tush, in my teeth, old man! As my niece Kate sat beside her bed today, this Elsie slept, and as she slept, she <coughs> moaned and groaned and turned this way and that way. And. How shall I marry one I've never seen? quoth she. Then. An hundred crowns, quoth she. Then. Is it certain he will die in an hour, quoth she, and then, yes, I love him not, and yet I am his wife, quoth she. Is it not so, Kate? I aunt, tis even so. Art thou sure of all this? I, sir, I wrote it all down on my tablet. Now you mark my words. It was of this fair fact she spake, and, and he is her husband, or I'll swallow my kirtle. Is this true, sir? True? The girl was raving. And uh, why should she marry a man who had but an hour to live? Marry? There be those that would marry but for a minute, rather than die old maids. <laughs> <laughs> I know one of them. <laughs>
So, my mysterious bride is none other than this winsome Elsie. By my hand, t'was no ill fortune's plunge into lucky bag. I might have fared worse with my eyes open. <laughs> but she comes, now to test her principles. Tis not every groom who gets the opportunity to woo his own wife. <laughs> Mistress Elsie. Master Leonard. So thou leavest us tonight. Yes, Master Leonard. I've been kindly tended and I fear I'm almost loaded to go. And this uh, <coughs> Colonel Fairfax, was thou glad when he escaped? Well, truly, Master Leonard, it's a sad thing when a young and gallant gentleman should die in the very fullness of his life. Then, when thou did faint into my arms, it was for joy at his safety. It might be, Master Leonard, I, I was highly brought, and I am but a girl, and when I'm highly brought, I faint. <laughs> now dost thou know I am consumed of a past jealousy. Thou, and of whom? Why, of this Fairfax, of course. Colonel Fairfax. Aye, may I be frank with thee? Elsie. I love thee, ardently, passionately. I have loved thee these two days, which is a long time. <laughs> I would fain join my life to thine. Master Leonard, thou, thou art jesting. Jesting? May I shrivel into reasons if I jest. I love thee with a love that is a fever, with a love that is a frenzy, with a love that eateth up my heart. What sayest thou? Thou wilt not let my heart be eaten up. Oh, mercy, what am I to say? Dost thou love me, or hast thou been insensible of me for two days? I love all brave men. Nay, there is love in excess. I thank heaven there are many brave men in England, but if thou lovest them all, I withdraw my thanks. I love the bravest best, but I may not listen. I'm not free. I'm a wife. Thou a wife? Whose? His name? His hours are numbered, his grave is dug, nay, his epitaph is set up. Come, his name! Oh, sir, please keep my secret, for it's the only barrier that fate could set up between us. My husband is none other than Colonel Fairfax. The greatest villain unhung! <laughs> the most ill-favoured, ill-mannered, ill-natured, ill-omened, tempered dog in Christendom! It's very like, for he's naught to me. I never even saw him. I was blindfolded, and he was to have died within the hour, and he did not die. And I went into him, but my heart is broken. He was to have died, and he did not die. The scoundrel. The perjured, treacherous villain. Thou should have insisted on his dying first, to be sure. Tis the only way with these Fairfaxes. I now wish I had. Bloodthirsty little maiden. <laughs> a fig for this fair house. Be mine. He will never know. He dare not show his face. And even if he dare, what art thou to him? Fly with me, Elsie. We shall be married tomorrow, and thou wilt be the happiest wife in England. Master Leonard, I am amazed. Is it thus brave soldiers speak to poor girls? Oh, for shame, for shame. I'm wed, not the least because I do not love my husband. I'm a wife, sir, and I have a duty. And oh, sir, thou words are wicked words. They terrify me. They're not worthy your honest and brave heart. Oh, shame upon thee. Shame upon thee. Nay, I'll say, I, I did but jest. I spake but to try thee. <laughs>
to rashly judge for them. Thank you. 